build that. But in terms of production, the watering system you have yeah. is very unique. I've never seen this anywhere else. So I'd love to hear, it seems like you have a, a semi-automated system and I'd love to hear more how you created this and, and how it works and yeah, and why you chose this, this route. So once again, I have to give my credit to, to um, in this case, uh, I believe his name is John. Uh, up at Dowie, Fa Dowie or Dowie Farm, sorry, John, if I got that wrong, up in New Hampshire, uh, who's actually a direct competitor of mine now, and it's always fun to see him in the restaurants <laughs> or see his product. Um, he was making YouTube videos back in the day, and I saw something similar to this. It's a, a, it's a basic ebb and flow system where we have a bottom reservoir, right? Yeah. Um, and it's pumping water into these flood tables. So these flood tables are molded in a way where the water comes in and at level, the water will always drain back. This mm. is, there's a slight incline to this um, bulkhead at the end here. Yeah. Right? And so basically what we do is like up on whatever our interval is, once a day, once every two days, it's not actually that often, we pump the water in and I can individually control these bays. Uh, we pump the water in, it sits there for like, what, 30 seconds, and then it gets released back down into the reservoir. So we're saving a lot of that water by recirculating it. Yeah. We were actually the first farm in the United States, according to my inspectional services agent, that got this design cleared with the FDA. Wow. Because, you know, they came in here, they didn't know what the heck they were looking at, right? So we had to go all the way up the chain, and uh, obviously the produce safety rule is the, the, the federal guidelines that um, farms like this are our purview to, um, and I don't know if that was the correct syntax, but the produce safety rule is, is our, are our guidelines. Yeah. And um, so we had to figure that all out, right? Um, this used to be completely automated. And now you notice, huh. look at this. There's an, yeah, there's, there's yeah. a, there's an empty, empty bulkhead. Empty bulkhead. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm, Jonah, I wonder why. Uh, Dreams of automation, right? Automation is great, right? And especially at a certain scale, automation yeah. makes so much sense. Yeah. We noticed that we weren't able to get the timing because it used to be uh, the pumps were on like an irrigation timer yeah. uh, or, or a Raspberry Pi, Arduino, whatever you want to do. And then the there used to be uh, solenoid valves that used to open that would release the water, right? Yeah. So we'd pump it in and pump it out. One of the problems is that we were only able to do it in minute segments. Yeah. So maybe seconds would have been easier, but even just the level. And so what we noticed is that because conditions aren't perfect, there was still a little bit of variety happening. For mm. example, the tray on one side would get more water than the tray on the other side, or one side of it, or a one week older tray of shiso is going to absorb more water or less water, right? Yeah. Than, 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 a, than a shiso tray of a different age. So the attention that the trays need from the farm justified actually doing this semi automatically again. Someone has to be at the farm every day anyway to deal with germ and spray these germ trays. Yeah. The, especially the ones in direct light. Yeah. So it just, okay, fine. You might as well spend a half an hour. It takes a half an hour to water a thousand trays. Might as well just give them the attention that they deserve. Yeah. It ends up being a better uh, workflow, or, or rather, we end up having less crop failure, less overwatering, less underwatering. Now, I'm not saying that that is like a rule of thumb. Uh, that was just our experience. Yeah. I'm sure that automation can be done in a way where it works perfectly, right? But that was a funny story where I have a massive tote full of $45 solenoid valves that basically just got given away because it made more sense for us not to have them. Yeah, no, there's so many factors that play with things like this is like, what soil are you using? What is the, you know, how, how long can it take till the solenoid actually can drain out? Because right. like at, our, at, at, you know, Living Earth, we would water for an hour, two hours, and it would sit in water the whole time, but we were using a certified organic soil that didn't absorb water as well. Right. So there's things like that. There's so many factors at play that determine yeah. what will work. Um, but I'm glad, like, it, it, it's very interesting. It's a very interesting story that you guys had it automated, but it wasn't working well. So you took a step back and now you have a system that's semi-automated, which still saves a lot of time. You're not watering each tray one at a time. And by doing that, uh, you're, fi you're finding the balance between automation. And that, that's a big factor. And I think why a lot of the really big farms yeah. have been not doing well or failing is because they, they spent too much time trying to perfect a system with automation and they didn't focus on, on the sales. So if they just did a semi-automated system, 
they would have a profitable farm like Boston Microgreens instead of a farm that is now in bankruptcy and you know can't operate anymore, can't feed people, and can't do the good work that you know they were intended to do. Yeah, it's very interesting to be in this industry right now, where people and you know a lot of investor money they build a golden temple, a golden cage, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Right. Um, you're growing produce, right?